What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're getting back on the 7.3 build. This video is gonna be a little bit different than normal. It's not necessarily something that's gonna be fabrication related, but I've been doing a bunch of research on this topic of putting an electronic fuel pump in these 7.3 IDI diesels, and all the videos that I've come across are absolutely garbage. So what I wanna do today is kinda of walk you guys through how to do this, what I'm gonna be doing, and hopefully you can use this as a reference if you plan on doing this in the future. So. Today we're gonna to be getting that installed in the truck. I'll kind of go over everything with you guys and just show you what you need to be able to do this and then we'll go ahead and start actually getting to it on the truck. So this right here should be everything that I need to be able to get this job done. I did go ahead already off camera and get the bracket that I need to be able to mount my fuel pump in the engine bay. This does mount right off the engine cage in my truck and obviously not every 7.3 IDI is gonna have an engine cage that you can mount things off of. So you need to go ahead and accommodate for making your own mount to be able to mount the fuel pump somewhere in your engine bay. The fuel pump that I will be using is the Facet Duralift electronic fuel pump. This is part number 40285. I got this thing right off of Amazon, two day shipping. I couldn't beat it. The price was a little bit more expensive than the other places, but for a couple bucks more, I buy everything off of Amazon as it is. So this was like a no brainer. This does come with two eighth inch MPT inlet and outlet ports. It does have the power and ground coming off of it. And this connector right here, you do need to buy the opposite side of the connector if you still wanna utilize this, which I do because I wanna be able to pull this connector apart right here and be able to just unbolt the bracket. That way, if I ever need to do any maintenance on this pump down the road, I can go ahead and just unbolt and unplug everything super easily. But I have seen people just cut the connector, cut the wiring right here, right above the connector, and just splice their wiring right into it. That way you're just kind of bypassing this all together, but I don't want to have to cut wires down the road if I don't have to. Another thing that I have up here is the ring terminals and butt connectors for all the wiring that I'll be doing on this entire setup. Uh, I do have my wiring right here, which is just some 16 gauge wiring. Um, I do have the wiring conduit to be able to go over all the wiring once everything's kind of put together and in its place. That way I don't have a bunch of just noodle wiring all over the place in my engine bay looking all crazy. Uh, you do need a four pin 30 amp relay. So this will go obviously in line with the pump and it has your constant power, your ground coming from the pump to this relay. You have the ground coming from the relay down to your frame rail or wherever you want to do your constant ground for your relay. And then you have your key on key off position uh, for the pump so it knows when to turn on. And then I do have my connectors to go on the relay right here. Another thing that you'll need is a fuel pump block off plate for your old mechanical fuel pump. This one is from ICT Billet. The part number for this is 551442. And this shares the same basically plate that a big block Chevy uses. So that's what this is technically for is a big block Chevy, but the 7.3 IDIs and the big block Chevy share the same exact mounting positions and all that stuff between the two. You obviously need a gasket for this plate as well. And the part number for this is 6579. This is a felt pro gasket. Another thing that you'll need is your fittings coming off of your pump. So this is an eighth inch MPT 90 to a barb fitting three eighths. And that will go on this side and on this side. That's just the way that I found would be the easiest way to route all this stuff. And obviously you need two of those. You also need this connector right here, which is a three eighths female MPT to a three eighths barb fitting. And this will go off the fuel filter base. I'll show you guys where this goes once we get to that point, but it basically goes off the fuel filter. Part number on this guy is 57002-0606. And last but certainly not least, you need your 3 8 fuel line and your four hose clamps to be able to get all that stuff put on. There is only two lines that you need to make, so I did go ahead and just get, a, it's a roughly four feet of fuel line. Hopefully that is enough for where I'm gonna be mounting the pump, but you will need that obviously to be able to connect everything and get it all set up. That should be everything that I need to be able to get this whole setup in the truck. So we'll go ahead and what I'll do is get the fuel pump mounted where I'm gonna be putting it, and then we'll go ahead and start disconnecting all the stock stuff and getting the stock mechanical fuel pump and the fuel lines out of the way so we can start installing all the new stuff in its place. I guess I should mention real quick too, the reason I'm actually doing this electronic fuel pump swap on this truck, and the reason for that is because this thing does have an issue with hard starting first thing in the morning, or if the truck's been sitting for roughly an hour or longer, 
which results in the batteries getting drained and just putting a lot of stress on everything just trying to sit there and crank the truck over and the reason that's happening is because there is a leak in the fuel system somewhere which is allowing the diesel to be able to go back through the fuel line all the way back into the tank so every time i try and start it the truck has to pump the fuel from the tank through the fuel rails all the way up into the motor and this being a mechanical fuel pump it has to go off the revolutions of the cam obviously so it does take a couple seconds to start as you can see in this clip right here And that's obviously not ideal to have. So doing this electronic fuel pump should fix all those issues. After doing research on this whole electronic fuel pump setup as well, I have seen that a couple people have had issues with the mechanical fuel pump failing, the diaphragm in there actually failing, which will cause diesel fuel to just dump into the crankcase and inside of the motor, which obviously I don't want either. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this whole electronic fuel pump on here and hopefully it solves all my issues with all that stuff and we'll be good to go. Now that I have the fuel pump in its place, you can kind of see how the bracket I made works. It comes right off the engine cage right here and has the fuel pump sit nice and in line with the shock mount and has everything sit nice and vertical and flat, just how it needs to be. So now what I need to do is get my 90 degree fitting off of here, which this is the outlet side of the pump right here. This will go over to the fuel filter right here, right to this 90 degree fitting. And right now this does have a hard line coming off of it going down to the mechanical fuel pump. What I need to do is just disconnect this fitting right here. And then that's where this straight fitting that I was talking about before comes into place. So this is a 3 8 female MPT, like I was saying, to a 3 8 barb fitting. And that will just sit right on there. So that way I can have my hose go straight from a barb fitting off of here, straight to the barb fitting on here. It's nice and short and then makes it really easy. And then the inlet side of the pump right here will go have a 90 off of it as well and it'll go down the engine cage tube down to the fuel rail on the frame rail that's coming from the tank taking a little bit of time i do have my new fuel lines ran to the new pump you can see right here i got my 90 degree fitting in ran it over got that new fitting on the 90 coming off of the fuel filter got my hose clamps on there got that cut to length everything's looking good you can see right here the inlet side is coming out of the new pump 90s goes down you can see the hose clamps down there going down the engine cage which end up going just right here coming down going inside of the frame rail right there and then what i did is you can see it goes into the fuel rail right here so basically what i did is just cut the fuel rail off and then put my new hose right over it, hose clamped it, and it should be good to go now. One thing to note is obviously you don't want to have a full tank of gas because when you go and start messing with these fuel lines, uh, fuel will start dumping out of the fuel line if you have a full tank just from gravity. Now I'm going to go ahead and start messing with the wiring side of things. So I have my four post relay right here and I do have kind of a little cheat sheet right here that I'm going to be going off of that I found online. So on here there's obviously the four posts each post have a different number um, associated with it so there's going to be an 86 a 30 a 87 and an 85 so the 86 is going to be your constant chassis ground that's what you want to hook up on your relay the pin 30 is going to be your battery constant so your constant battery voltage is going to be going to your pin 30. pin 87 is going to be your fuel pump power so this wire, this red wire right here coming off of your fuel, your new fuel pump is going to be your 87 and then the key on key off is going to be 85 on your relay. So it's going to be kind of hard to tell because this thing doesn't like to focus, but you can kind of see right there every relay once you get them, they're going to have numbers associated with them and they're coded down here on the bottom as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is start getting all of my wiring hooked up. And then I'll show you guys where I'm actually getting the key on, key off, and then where I'm going to be grounding to on here as well. All right, boys and girls. So it is currently the next day. I did go ahead and get the wiring all situated on this thing and got that all dialed in. So what I did for the grounds for this relay and for the pump itself is I went to the side of this solenoid right here, which already had a ground coming from the battery. So I figured that would be a perfectly fine ground to be able to use for both of these 
and then for the power side I just came right out of the relay went right up followed these wires right up to the battery terminal so it's getting a good constant battery voltage coming from here and then for the key on key off ended up running it down around you can see where the conduit is kind of come around here runs up right here up around and then goes right to the injection pump right down into the key on key off for the injection pump and I checked this with a voltage meter and this does have the key on key off um, power going to it so I just put a ring terminal on there it's kind of hard to get down in there and get to it but I used a nine millimeter socket and got that there's just a little nut right there that you can pop off and then you just put the terminal obviously underneath it and then you're good to go so wiring side of this is all done now what I need to do go ahead and get this part knocked out which I don't think is going to be too bad but it is super nasty down inside of there it's hard to tell but um, I'm gonna have to go from this side and luckily because I did do this engine cage already this section right here is already cut out in this inner fender liner so I should be able to get down in there and get to that fairly easily but it should just be a 9 16 uh, socket to get to the two bolts holding that on and I can pop that deal right out of there all right so I get, went ahead and got the old mechanical fuel pump out of there you can see this thing is just covered in diesel fuel and old grime um, probably a little bit of engine oil as well because I'm pretty sure this gasket was all screwed up inside of there you can see it was kind of ripped a little bit right there so this thing is out not gonna be using that anymore the way that I found that was easiest to get this pump out was removing the vacuum pump from in front of it or basically on top of it and it gives you perfect access to get down in there and get to both the 916 bolts that hold the mechanical fuel pump on and then I've gone ahead already and gotten everything cleaned up got all the gasket off of there with the razor blade got it all cleaned up and now I'm gonna go ahead and get the block off plate installed inside of here here we go so got everything buttoned up got the bracket all painted that holds the new fuel pump on there got that all put back together everything's tight I got the block off plate you can see right there up in there with a the gasket put some fresh hardware in there as well just to keep everything nice and tidy now all I need to do is get my brother out here I'm gonna go ahead and start priming the system so from what I understand all I need to do <clears throat> is turn the key on this will start filling and then I just depress the little schrader right here until diesel starts coming out of it and then that'll kind of purge the entire system and then I can go ahead and try and start this thing and see what it does all right so he's gonna get in turn the key to the on position we should see this thing either make some noise or start to fill oh I hear it she's filling she's filling up pretty good all right so I'll let this fill and then oh we got a leak all right turn it off so we got a leak right here that I need to fix so I will be right back all right so I went ahead and tightened this up let's see if it leaks again go ahead Jake All right, let's see. I think it's just got to build pressure and it, see if it'll start leaking. Still filling the filter up right here on the pump. So you got a nice flow right there. There's just still air in the system. Like I didn't get it all out. But it's running. At least I didn't screw that part up. It didn't have this problem before, but I want to see if just turning it off and turning it back on and if if it will actually just start right back up. So let's see. Wait to start. Starts right back up. So I don't know. No issues with it being any different than it was before but 
I want to see now. I think I might have just had some air in the system or something still at the at, for the first start. Um, I did see like a pretty consistent stream coming out of the little Schrader. So I don't know. There might be a little bit more air that was trapped in there in the fuel line still. But I'm going to go ahead and see now. Now that it's running and everything's good, um, I'll see in about an hour. I'll come back out here and try and start it again and see if that, if that whole issue is fixed now. So it's been roughly an hour. Let this thing sit. I'm going to go ahead and see how she does now. See if the starting issue has been solved or if we still have an issue with... It could be a glow pug issue, but I was almost positive it was a fueling issue. So we'll see if it works now. way better way better than it was before for sure i think the batteries might be a little bit low from trying to start it the last couple times but i'm gonna go drive it right now and then uh just see how it does see if the truck acts any differently with this fuel setup on it now um i don't i don't think it'll be that different than it was before but we'll see i guess all right so after a little 10 to 15 minute drive around town the truck does seem like it has a little bit more grunt at the lower end when you shift into a gear because i am manually shifting in this thing even though it has a c6 i do have the winter shifter in there to manually change each gear um, so it does feel going into second gear like it has a little bit more pull on the low end um, which could just be because the new fuel pump is just keeping more pressure constantly at the rail um, over the mechanical fuel pump that was in there it could just be me tripping on things i have no idea um, but it does feel like it does have a little bit more low end grunt to it over time i guess we'll see what happens as far as the hard start goes it did start a little bit better with the new fuel pump but um, it does still have a little bit of a lag i don't know if that's just a common thing with these trucks but it could be a glow plug thing like i was saying or something else i have no idea but overall this truck is coming out pretty rad and at the end of the day the whole electronic fuel pump thing was just an upgrade so worst case it was just something to help better the truck but something you guys probably haven't seen is this rear bumper that i've added to the back of this thing this is a wsd metal rear bumper um i do make these things it, they come as a weld it yourself kit that i just put together and if you guys want one just let me know hit me up on instagram and i can get you set up with one of these things i have done the series on the whole front end getting the coilovers and all that stuff mounted on this truck if you guys haven't seen that already um, but another thing too that i haven't really shown on this thing is the whole interior so i did go through and when i got this truck it did have a blue interior in it so i went it did have this gray seat but the dash and the door panels and all that stuff was the blue color and I was not a fan of that. So I went through and color changed everything to the opal gray, I believe it is, um, which is what's in my other truck right behind the crew cab right there. And Pamela, if you guys know what that truck is. But I did also add this winter shifter, like I was saying. And what this is doing is just basically allowing me to manually shift into every gear because this truck, when I originally got it, Having just a column shifter and letting it shift by itself and drive just was not cutting it for me. I didn't like where the shift points were on the trans, so I wanted to throw that shifter in there and be able to shift when I wanted, um, which has helped out a bunch with this truck. It completely changed the way that this thing drives, which is pretty awesome. That's pretty much going to do it, though. If you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace!